Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your written word and welcome you into our hearts and lives. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Many years ago, about a year after I started coming back to church and to St. John's, I went to Israel with my sister Grace and her husband Peter, the church minister. And with others from their church in Barwell, we were at the Sea of Galilee. It was so quiet and peaceful, we sat down by the water's edge and rested. Peter climbed a small hill to our side and spoke out the words of the Sermon on the Mount. It was beautiful. We heard every word. The sound was as clear as a bell. And we sat in peace and listened. And it was to this area that Jesus chose to speak to crowds of people hungry for his words. And in the tradition of teachers or rabbis of the time, Jesus sat to speak to the people. He went and sat on a boat just off the shore, with the crowd standing on the shore listening. The hills formed an amphitheatre around the sea, and the voice of Jesus rang out clearly, with everyone being able to hear. You see, Jesus had something to say, and it was important that people would hear his spoken word. Jesus was well into his ministry and was becoming well known. He wanted his followers to know more, but wanted them to listen to what he had to say, then to discuss it with each other and spread his word by doing so. Jesus had an easy way of talking and spoke to people in a way that was familiar to them. Many of the people around the sea were farmers, and so this was the language that Jesus used. And so, in today's reading, we enter the part in Matthew called The Parables, a series of short stories that Jesus told using examples of farming processes. Today's reading is the first of the parables, and Jesus talks about a sower haphazardly sowing seeds on soil. Some land at the side of a path where the birds would come and eat them. Some land in rocks with little soil, only allowing the seed to grow a little, then wither and die in the sun. Some seeds fall on thorns which choke it. Then finally, the farmer sows some seeds on fertile soil, which go on to grow well and multiply. But so far, so good. The crowds really didn't understand. You see, the word and message of Jesus isn't always easy to understand, and the crowds didn't. What did sowing seeds have to do with spreading the words of God? The disciples questioned Jesus why he didn't make the teaching easier, but Jesus puts his hand up. He hadn't finished talking, and in verses 18 onwards, explaining the meaning of his words to the crowd. Jesus preached to many people, as would the disciples throughout their future ministries. They would also talk to crowds. Some would turn away as soon as they started talking. Some would shout insults, some would listen and forget, and some would start and fall at the first hurdle. But some would listen and believe and talk to others, spreading the word of Jesus onwards to other people's lands. Great, isn't it? But I wonder, how did each of us hear, first hear about Jesus? maybe like me, from our parents. And possibly the older generation, such as myself, would have learned it in schools and such. But where did today's generations hear? Well, of course, some learn through attending church with their parents, 
and I think hotel rooms usually have a copy of Gideon's Bible. But very school, few schools have school services or assemblies, or with a hymn these days. But some schools have a church visitor giving Bible stories. Two of my children, grandchildren went to a Church of England school in Marchwood, and they had the God Lady. And she went in once a month. Now, I, when they described the God Lady, I thought, mm, that reminds me of someone, and it reminds me of our lovely Chris that used to go into the schools. And Chris, of course, had met my children, so I just thought, yep, I wonder if her name was Chris, the God Lady. And of course, we have our very own teller of stories here, Brown Powell, who visits Ramville School once a month with a Bible story and talks about it to the children. A very good way of planting seeds. And of course, schools visit us for Christmas services and other occasions throughout the year. So you see, it's up to us to tell others about us. We are the disciples of today. But I don't know about you though, I sometimes find talking to other people about Jesus or why I come to church a bit daunting and by no stretch of imagination do I have the teacher inside me. But sometimes it has happened when I've been in unusual situations where Jesus gives me the right words to use. But then that's another story. Or is it? The disciples were ordinary chaps from all sorts of backgrounds and following Jesus gave the first disciples the right words to use in all situations. Words that were important enough and went on to be saved and written down in this very book, our Bible. And this Bible that we use today has and still is traveling to every part of the world with missionaries such as Nelia and Mike, who were recently here in church before returning to their missionary work in Brazil. The word of Jesus is alive and active. New seeds are being planted throughout this country and worldwide. Yes, some will be eaten by birds, some will grow a bit and die, some will be suffocated. But here in front of me, I'm looking out at a field full of seeds who landed in good soil and have grown and grown and grown and multiply. You are the seeds that grew. You are seeds who are sell themselves spreading the good news of Jesus to others. Seeds who are already or becoming the disciples of tomorrow. I'm sure you'll all agree, now that is good news. And I will say, Amen to that. <laughs>